Hi friends, this is Joe, and this is the Decahedron RPG podcast slash YouTube channel, I guess. Today we are talking about metacurrency and RPGs. I guess I'm going to be giving a defense of metacurrency. <laughs> if you are familiar with the Nerds RPG Variety Cast, the host there, Jason, very great guy, very great podcast, he, he feels that metacurrency mechanics draw you out of the game and I disagree. And that's what we're going to talk about today. You know, maybe I should really ask Jason to come on the show and, and we could discuss it. So yeah, I'm going to tell you what metacurrency is. I'm going to give my defense for it. And then uh, I'm going to ask you what you think. <laughs> so if you don't know metacurrency, you might do because metacurrency is kind of a meta term, right? A lot of games use metacurrencies, but they call them different things. I first encountered metacurrency in Fudge way back in 1990-something. As far as I know, it's the first game with a metacurrency mechanic. They call them Fudge Points. I don't know if that's true. I know that Fudge drew a little bit from the Marvel superhero RPG. I don't know if there was any metacurrency in that. If you know that game... Uh, you know, the old Marvel game by TSR. Let me know. Um, GURPS, before that, had semi-kind of <laughs> a metacurrency. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. So anyway, in Fudge, they were called Fudge Points. In Savage Worlds, they are called Bennies. In Fate, they called them Fate Points. Uh, in Buffy, the role-playing game or Angel role-playing game, they called them Drama Points. They're, they're all the same thing. A metacurrency is something that the player has, so outside of the game, to allow the player to affect the game. For example, you might use a metacurrency point to re-roll a roll that you failed. Or you might use a metacurrency point to alter the facts of a scene, to say, hey, that prison guard just happens to be my cousin. That's actually an example straight out of the fudge book. That is what metacurrency is. I love metacurrency mechanics. And maybe because I'm a rules light type guy and using metacurrency allows you to replace a whole bunch of rules with one mechanic. It also increases player agency, I think. So let me discuss Jason's point. Jason's point, Jason feels that using metacurrency takes you out of the game. Jason, if I'm getting this wrong, call in. <laughs> t tell, me, tell me how I'm misquoting you. He feels that once you've rolled the die and you've come up with that result, dang it, I, I missed him. You know, I was trying to hit the dragon. I missed the dragon. That then to say, I'm going to spend my fudge point, faint point, drama point, Benny, whatever meta currency you want, to re-roll that, that moves him, I'm going to use the old GNS triangle here, that moves him from the, the narrativist mindset where that die has been cast that I missed to the, the gamer side where he's saying, well, I have, I have three of these points. Do I want to spend one now? Do I want to save it for later? And I guess that's fair, but I don't see how that is any different from, you know, for most game systems saying, all right, well, the dragon is this far away. I have a plus whatever on this weapon. He has an armor factor of this, plus his dexterity is that. And my, who knows, all that stuff rolled roll together. I think it's that's the same amount of taking you out of the gaminess as just saying... I'm going to spend a point and we roll that. Yeah. So that's my defense number one. My defense number two is from a game mechanic side. Um, I come from a gaming heritage. After D&D, &D, I moved to GURPS. And GURPS is a skill-based game. But that's being very, I don't know. Uh, broad, I guess, with the term. I would actually say that GURPS is skill advantage and disadvantage based. 
Those are the main things that define your character. Your skills are things like sword skill, you know, your ability to wield a sword. But advantages could be things like ambidextrous. I can use the sword with my left hand or my right hand. I got those backwards. <laughs> yeah, and disadvantages are things like, you know, I don't know, I, I have a fear of heights. So in GURPS, there's pages on pages of these advantages and disadvantages, and every one of them has a cost involved. You know, a fear of heights might be five points, or it might be ten points. I can't remember. You know, that was Steve Jackson saying, you know, I think in the average game, this disability would hurt this character this much in comparison to this disability or this ability or all those things, which is fair. But so what happens when you have that character that takes that thing, fear of heights? I mean, I started with it. We'll, we'll keep going with it. But it just never comes up during play. You're not the type of GM that has high places or that campaign just happens to take place all in a submarine and there are no heights to be afraid of or whatever. They got, <laughs> they got a bonus, really. They got those points to add to their character for taking that disadvantage. That didn't hurt them at all. It, it's money for nothing. I'm not going to start singing Dire Straits. On the flip side, what if they got that 10 points, but it so happens that this campaign suddenly takes place in a forest city for months on end, and there's all these little rope bridges going from tree to tree, and the character is paralyzed and, and has difficulty with them, in which case that 10 points suddenly seems like not enough. By using a meta currency, you don't worry about that during character creation. Instead, those points are spent or given to you depending on the case, as those situations come in play. So it's auto-balancing. In my game designs, I tend to use experience points as meta-currency. Uh, you get your XP for doing whatever you did that adventure, and then you can spend XP to make these things happen, to power your special powers or to you know, make these weird events happen that work out to your benefit. Also, you can get experience points when things work out in the other way. But I, and I've heard complaints about that. It wasn't a Jason show. It was on somebody else's show. Carl, maybe, over at uh, the Geomologist podcast? Maybe? Question mark? Or it might have been Merc the Meek, because in my damaged ears. They both sound very similar, and so I cross them over sometimes. They say, I don't like that because I'm using this ability, it's now slowing down my progression, you know, of when I gain more levels, if you will. I don't use levels because I use skill-based systems, but you get skill levels. But in my mind, doing it this way is no different from the old D&D method of saying, well, because an elf can see in the dark and cast spells and use weapons, it costs them 3,000 experience points to go up a level instead of 1,500 for a straight fighter. I'm making those numbers up. Don't call in to tell me I got them wrong. I know. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing, except it's that thing again where it's auto-balancing. You know, if you have that elf that you're making pay... <laughs> For every level, because he has infravision, but he never gets to use the infravision, you're kind of screwing over the player. Whereas this way, you only spend the point when infra, the infravision would be dramatically important to the story, and they want to use it. I, it just it makes sense to me. I like meta currencies. Okay, we're a little out of sequence, but I said we'd get to it. So, like I said, I came from GURPS, and. GURPS had kind of a meta currency, so GURPS had an advantage called Lucky. <laughs> and in GURPS, if you had that advantage, once per game night, once per session, you could re-roll any roll. So that was kind of a meta currency of one. Anyway, <laughs> I just told you I'd get to that, so that I got to it. Um, but yeah, so that's my defense of meta currencies. Let me know what you think of meta currencies. As far as I know, D&D does not have any meta currencies. It never has. Although I've heard that fifth edition has something called inspiration, which maybe is kind of like a meta currency. But like I said, I've never played fifth edition, so I don't know. 
Um, but let me think, yeah, let me know what you think. A minute. You know what? I'm going to do a poll. I'm going to do one of those YouTube polls. I will put the link in the episode description on YouTube. I'll put it on the first comment. And go to the poll and, and tell me what you think. And I think when you do the poll, you can put comments too, I think. <laughs> And if not, go to YouTube and put your comments below. Let me know what you think about meta currencies and RPGs. And Jason, if you want to come on the show and discuss them face to face, so to speak, I won't make you get on camera. <laughs> yeah, you're, you are invited. Let me know and uh, we'll set something up. I think that could be a good discussion. All right, that's it. That's all I have to say about meta currencies. This is kind of a short episode this week, but that's okay. I like short episodes. Uh, thanks for watching and or listening. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me on YouTube, comment below. If you're listening to the podcast, you can still go to YouTube and comment <laughs> on the video if you can find it. Or send fee- uh, yeah, send email to feedback at decahedron.com. You can call the feedback line. It's 562-774-2278, which is... 562 RPG cast. Anyway, you can call that. You can leave a voicemail and I'll get it. I'll play it on the show probably. <laughs> oh, there's say hi dot chat slash decahedron. That's a website where like say if you're overseas or something, you can call, uh, you can go there and leave a message using your mic. Or like I said, just use the email line feedback at decahedron. You can just do that in text or you can uh, send a voice file, uh, audio file. Anyway, thanks again for watching and your listening. And until next week, happy gaming, happy life. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Dekihedron RPG podcast. Please come back.